I'm Victoria Cooksey, and today we're going to be making a cider cake. And I've added yogurt as a French influence, and olive oil as an Italian influence, and it's fall, so we've got to have some cider added too. To begin making this yogurt cider cake, take an 8 inch springform pan and turn it upside down. Put some parchment paper there, put the bottom of the pan back on, and just push it in lightly. Then you're just going to take your little lever on the side and close it up. That way you got the really nice parchment in there. You don't have to cut the round out. Take a little stick of butter and just lightly butter the bottoms and a little bit on the side. Also go ahead and preheat your oven for 350 degrees. First two ingredients for our cake are simple enough. One cup of regular white sugar and a six ounce container of plain full fat yogurt. This one happens to have the cream on top. I don't know why, but I always just find those appealing to me. Put that in. Make sure you get all that yogurty goodness in there. Take your whisk, whisk it to combined. Crack open two eggs, add one of them, whisk it in. Once it's about in, then go ahead and put the next egg in, whisk it in. To continue with the wet works, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Try to go for the best vanilla extract you can afford. Definitely makes a difference. One third cup extra virgin olive oil. And I'm using just my over the counter kind of organic store bought extra virgin olive oil. Don't use your fancy stuff, your expensive stuff. That's a little bit more peppery and why waste the money in a cake? You're not going to really taste it. Just go for the basic. Dump that in. And then we're going to add <laughs> a cup of cider. This is the one I'm using today. Look for one that's labeled dry English cider because if we add a regular cider in here, it's going to add a lot more sugar and it kind of changes the formula of this. So just look for a dry English cider and a cup of that. Again, just whisk it in. So right now this is a really loose batter. This will be the time to bust out a second bowl. We're gonna put in this, already I've got one and two thirds cup of AP all-purpose flour. Next, one and a half teaspoons baking powder. One teaspoon baking soda and a little pinch of salt, which is literally just pinch it between your fingers, whisk that up. This is also good because if there's any lumps in the flour that whisk that totally out. Take that flour mixture and just dump it on top of the wet works. Stir to combine. It'll start to thicken up a little bit here. Kind of Go around the edges, make sure you get everything. Give it a little spin. Take your batter and pour it into that prepared eight inch spring form pan. Get it all in there. When I'm using spring form pans, I always take out a little bit of extra insurance by getting a cookie sheet, putting it on there and baking it on that. That way, if for some reason anything goes anywhere, you don't have to clean up your oven. Today the cake took 50 minutes to cook. That's five zero fifty 50 minutes. So next step is let it rest in the pan for 10 minutes. Once you took the knife around a few times, go ahead and open that latch up and it comes right off. And now I've just got to let this cool completely before we can eat it. And here's a shot of a slice of this cake on the plate. You can see it gets that nice golden brown on the top. Really moist, dense cake. So eat this and drink the rest of your cider along with it. I love this cake with the cider, but if you don't want to do cider, you can actually use a cup of 2% or whole milk instead. Uh, when you're cooking with the cider, it's going to be a good 55 minutes for the cake to finish. But if you add milk instead, it's going to be more like 35 to 40 minutes of baking time. So either way, it's both delicious. And I actually, if you do go with the cider, I think it actually tastes better the next day. Kind of gets a little more boozy taste to it. 